you can pick this figure up at Dan's Dinosaur. Link is in the description. Remember, if you order anything from Dan's Dinosaur, just tell him Dinosaur Scream sent you in the comment section of your order. Helps out the channel a great deal, and it's very much appreciated. Hey everyone, welcome back to another EO Fauna review. Today we take a look at their new Triceratops figures. EO Fauna doesn't crank out a lot of figures each year, but when they do give us a release, the figures are very well researched and extremely well done, and these two Triceratops are no exception. And a first for EO Fauna, they released this figure in two separate paint schemes. This one right here is the dominant paint scheme, and this one is the cryptic. Each figure comes with a little pamphlet tied to the leg that gives you a little bit of information about this Triceratops. And both figures come with the same exact collector card with this beautiful artwork of both figures. And the way they are shipped, they actually come with a tray that's securely placed over the horn. So you have to worry about your horns showing up uh, warped. They are made out of a slightly flexible material, so that's a good idea to ship them with that extra protection. So let's get both these figures on the turntable and take a closer look at them. So let's start with a nice 360 degree view of these Triceratops. Now I normally don't buy variant paint schemes of the same mold. I usually just go with the color scheme that's most appealing to me. But I am very happy they actually picked up both these figures. They look excellent posed together like this. Looks like two males sparring over a female or some territory. And they're really well done figures. Great detail on them. I love the scale detail on them. And the paint jobs are good. They're not perfect. Uh, my biggest issue is on the cryptic paint scheme and a lot of people have this issue this those blue sleeves on the limbs looks really tacky and off-putting I think it's just a very odd creative choice but other than that I think they're really great looking figures and they look excellent next to each other so let's just do a couple quick measurements if you measure this figure along the curve of the tail this figure is just about nine and a quarter inches long and just about three and a half inches tall to the top of the frill. Now these figures are actually sculpted off a specific Triceratops specimen, specifically the Yoshi trike or specimen number MOR3027. So that specimen actually they upscaled it to specimen number UCMP128561. I I think it's just like a snout that's like in some collection somewhere. So that specimen scaled up is about 20, just over 27 feet long. So with those measurements, that put this figure right on that 135 scale range. And another thing that makes these Triceratops figures unique, the Yoshi trike is an undescribed Triceratops species. It's not a named species. Right now, the only two valid Triceratops species are Triceratops horridus and Triceratops process. So the big difference with this Yoshi trike specimen is, is the length of the horns. The horns on this specimen are the longest Triceratops horns ever discovered. It's an older specimen, so it's older than Horridus and Process, and it will eventually be described and have its own scientific name. And those horns were long, just the horn cores were like just under four feet long, and they'd be even longer with the keratin sheet covering them. So pretty cool to have a different type of Triceratops in your collection. Pretty much every Triceratops figure ever made is modeled after Triceratops Horridus. So to have something different and unique looking for Triceratops is really refreshing. So let's pull the dominant paint scheme in first and take a closer look at this figure. The head sculpt on this figure is absolutely fantastic looking. Just love the open mouth look. I kind of wish they gave it an articulated jaw so we could at least close it, but it definitely would break up the uh, sleekness of the sculpt. You know, you just have a hinge right there. So I'm okay with the mouth being stuck open like this. You really don't see uh, Triceratops figures sculpted with their mouths wide open like this, and it's just such a cool looking figure. The paint scheme on the dominant one is definitely my favorite of the two. The head is done mostly in a very dark brown with a little bit of black mixed in. You have some bright orange markings along the frill. The eye is also done in bright orange with a black pupil. You've got the nostril sculpted in right here. The nose horn is sculpted in. The beak and then inside the mouth, you have some beautiful mouth detail on this figure. The tongue in the inside of the mouth is done in a very deep red color. You have a dark wash over there, bring up some of that detail. And you have a glossy coat to give it that wet look. And you can clearly see the teeth sculpted along the bottom right here. And even turning the figure over, you can see the teeth on the upper jaw are nicely sculpted. And you can kind of see it right here. They actually sculpted in indentations on the roof of the mouth for the nasal passages, which is a great attention to detail. I don't see a lot of figures with that amount of detail. Actually, the Eoforno Giganotosaurus has the nasal passages also sculpted in. And speaking of Triceratops teeth, I actually have a cast of one right here. And this is what the tooth of a Triceratops looks like. This is actually the whole root. This much of it would be sticking out of the gum line. 
if you look at the bottom right here, there's indentations where this another tooth would be seated right here. And as this tooth wore out, it'll push out and another tooth would be there to replace it so it can go along grinding its food. All right, let's pull him back in. You can see all this nice scale detail along the fur right here. Now, up until the end of 2018, uh, paleontologists did not know if Triceratops had scales or not on its frill. A specimen was discovered that showed that Triceratops did have scales on its frill, so it's glad that Eofauna included that. They do a lot of research when they do their figures, so you can always expect a very accurate figure from them. Going down to the main body, you can see those large hexagonal scales that Triceratops is known for. Main body is done in a light brown color with some dry brush over there to add some depth to that color. You get some large scales over the hips right here. Figure has very, very wide hips. And then going down to the main body, you have this black coloration that goes over the shoulders along the belly and around the hind leg right here and then you get some more of that black along the forearm it's kind of like a sleeve but it's not as bad as the blue on the cryptic model and then going down to the front legs you can see the three toe claws are painted in a light brown color and turn the figure over you can see the feet are the correct shape that's another nice touch along the bottom right here more of that black and some large belly scales here's the hind feet Toe claws are painted in that glossy brown color. You got some nice folds and wrinkles. You got the skin stretching right here because the hind leg, hind leg is extended back. The tail is curling to the side. It's a very short tail. And you have a little bit of a black sleeve covering about half of the tail right here. And then turn the figure from the other side so you can see it. Really well done. The hind leg is lifting up. Looks like the animal's pushing off, like charging forward. And that's why I absolutely love these two figures next to each other. This looks like two males sparring. You can actually even see the air canal sculpted in right here. So yeah, all in all, the dominant one is definitely my pa favorite paint scheme out of the two. Now let's take a look at the cryptic paint scheme, a much more vibrant paint scheme than the dominant one. The frill has this like bright teal blue mixed in with red, which is a really nice contrast in color. I do quite like that. You have some yellow around the nostril right here. The beak is painted a light gray. You have some black stripes on the skull and lower jaw. And then the same thing inside the mouth. You have that glossy coat in red with the teeth painted in. And let's take a look at those really, really long horns. Very well done. You have some wash over here to bring out some of the details in the horn. And the horns are made out of a slightly flexible material, so you don't really have to worry about these breaking off. And I just love how long the horns look on this. It gives this Triceratops a very unique look compared to all the other Triceratops figures. On the market, the eye is painted in bright orange, and you have a little bit of white around the eye right here, and the pupil is painted in black. And you do have a nice uh, dark wash going over like these lighter color scales, which really makes them pop. You can really see it on the chest right here and underneath the neck. And then going down to the main body, main body is a light brown. You have this dark brown pattern on the back right here. And you can see it goes all the way down to the tip of the tail. And that pattern is broken up along the tail. And then going down to the front legs. Now this is, a, like I keep saying, this is the part of the paint scheme I'm really not a fan of. Just these bright blue sleeves. But they do look much better in person than the promotional images. In the promotional images, the blue looked very flat and matte looking. But at least they gave a nice wash over it to bring out all that scale detail. So it does break up the blue. And then going down to the toe claws, they are painted a light gray. Same thing on the hind feet. Let me just get my camera to focus in on that. Now the blue on the hind feet looks much better than the forelimbs. You've got some of that brown pattern on the thigh right here that's going down to the leg. you got that nice dark wash to bring out all the scale detail. And turn the figure over, the underside is a cream color where the dark wash brings out all those really large belly scales. So all in all, I do like the cryptic paint scheme if they just painted the legs that light brown color like this part of the body this one would probably be my favorite paint scheme moving on to comparisons let's compare it to eel fauna's first dinosaur figure their giganotosaurus which a lot of people including myself consider one of the most accurate giganotosaurus figures on the market you can see these two figures look really really nice next to each other and next up is the only other dinosaur in the Eofauna line. Here it is with their amazing, amazing looking Atlasaurus. Still a favorite in my collection. I just love those freakishly long legs on that figure. They look absolutely beautiful together. And let's compare them to some other Triceratops figures from other companies. Here it is with the PNSO Triceratops. You can see this Triceratops is a little bit bigger than the Eofauna. Let me just get them 
side by side you can see there is quite the size difference between the two figures and next up for triceratops here it is with the safari limited 2017 triceratops these two figures um they're pretty close in scale with each other so it's nice to have this uh yoshi trike next to a very accurate looking triceratops horridus and lastly for triceratops here it is with the beautiful looking eofauna triceratops you can see that figure is absolutely huge and this is just a sub adult wait till that adult one comes out that thing's gonna be a beast and lastly for comparisons here's your obligatory t-rex and triceratops comparison here it is with the new pnso tyrannosaurus rex and i think these two figures scale really well with each other i felt that the pnso triceratops was just too big to scale with their new t-rex and i think it looks absolutely awesome next to the new eofauna triceratops so you've been looking for a triceratops to scale with this rex look no further than this one right here so final thoughts on these two figures another excellent offering from eofauna i look forward to every one of their dinosaur releases even though you know they're very far and few between actually these triceratops are the only figures eofauna will be releasing this year I think the sculpting and detail are fantastic on these figures. Like I said, the paint jobs are good. They're not my favorite paint jobs. I, like I said, the dominant one is my favorite color scheme. The cryptic one is also nice, you know, except for that blue sleeve. But all in all, really nice to have some kind of variety among Triceratops figures in your collection. Maybe someday someone will get around to making a nice looking Triceratops uh, process figure. But for now we have, you know, a million Horridus and now we have this undescribed Triceratops species to add to our collections. So yeah, I do highly recommend both these figures. You know, if you want to just get one, just pick the paint scheme you like the best. But I do recommend picking up both of them. I just like how you can pose them again. It looks like the two Triceratops are sparse. That's a really nice for your display shelf. And a side note about Eofauna, they do produce some very excellent books. I have their Theropod and Sauropod books, and they are excellent reading. A lot of great pictures and diagrams and tons of facts in them. Very well researched. And usually when they release a figure, it's kind of like a hint of what book is coming out next. You know, they released their Giganosaurus, and then they announced their Theropod book. They released the Atlasaurus, and then they came out with a Sauropod book. So I'm hoping for a Ceratopsian book to be coming out in the near future. I will be looking forward to that. And like I said at the beginning of the review, I got both these figures from Dan Stein. So when they got announced, he was actually running a special. You could get both these figures. I think it was like $40 for both of them that he ran the special for a week. So every time you hear about a new figure coming out, always check out Dan's. He usually runs a pretty good pre-order special for like the first week the figure is announced. So always keep an eye out for that. And also the link to Dan's Diners to purchase these figures is in the description. So that would do it for the review. I actually just got in all the new Safari 2021 figures. Safari actually sent those figures out to me to review. So be on the lookout for those. And be on the lookout for possibly a surprise early review for a highly anticipated figure sometime in the near future. I really hope that pans out. So as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.